What's up? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach, and I have a different and very special lesson for you today with one of the most famous speeches of all times. It has over 40 million views here on YouTube, and that is from Steve Jobs. Who is Mr. Jobs, you might ask? Well, many of you probably already know him as the founder of Apple Computers, the person who brought us the iPhone, the iPad, and so many other innovations that we use in our day-to-day -day life. This is a video that is very often quoted in all sorts of native media, and we just took a short part of it to teach you today, but I will link to the full clip down in the description below. I highly recommend you go check that out after for some major inspiration and great English practice. Remember, if you're new here, to hit the subscribe button so you can get the newest lessons like this one, teaching you fun, real-life English every single week. Without any further ado, let's watch this fun lesson with Steve Jobs. I'm uh, honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. Truth be told, uh, I never graduated from college, and uh, this is the closest I've ever gotten to a college graduation. <laughs> Today, I want to tell you three stories from my life. That's it. No big deal. Just three stories. The first story is about connecting the dots. I dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before I really quit. So why'd I drop out? It started before I was born. My biological mother was a young, unwed graduate student, and she decided to put me up for adoption. She felt very strongly that I should be adopted by college graduates, so everything was all set for me to be adopted at birth by a lawyer and his wife except that when I popped out, they decided at the last minute that they really wanted a girl. So my parents, who were on a waiting list, got a call in the middle of the night asking, we've got an unexpected baby boy, do you want him? They said, of course. My biological mother found out later that my mother had never graduated from college and that my father had never graduated from high school she refused to sign the final adoption papers. She only relented a few months later when my parents promised that I would go to college. This was the start in my life. And 17 years later, I did go to college. But I naively chose a college that was almost as expensive as Stanford. And all of my working class parents' savings were being spent on my college tuition. After six months, I couldn't see the value in it. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and no idea how college was going to help me figure it out. And here I was, spending all the money my parents had saved their entire life. So I decided to drop out and trust that it would all work out okay. It was pretty scary at the time, but looking back, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. The minute I dropped out, I could stop taking the required classes that didn't interest me and begin dropping in on the ones that looked far more interesting. It wasn't all romantic. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in friends' rooms. I returned Coke bottles for the five cent deposits to buy food with. And I would walk the seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. I loved it. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. Sometime life, sometimes life's gonna hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. 
I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. <laughs> it made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, <laughs> death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. When I was young, there was an amazing publication called the Whole Earth Catalog, which was one of the Bibles of my generation. And then, when it had run its course, they put out a final issue. It was the mid-1970s, and I was your age. On the back cover of their final issue was a photograph of an early morning country road, the kind you might find yourself hitchhiking on if you were so adventurous. Beneath it were the words, stay hungry, stay foolish. It was their farewell message as they signed off, stay hungry, stay foolish. And I have always wished that for myself. And now, as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Thank you all very much. I'm uh, honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. Commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. A commencement is a formal word that means the beginning of something. For example, the commencement of the war. But it is also the ceremony at a university, college, or high school during which degrees or diplomas are given to students who have graduated. The word fine means good, and its superlative form, finest, means best. Example, this is one of Picasso's finest pieces of artwork. The place where the speech is taking place and the university he is referring to is Stanford which is a university located in Silicon Valley near San Francisco in the state of California and is considered as one of the world's best. Truth be told, uh, I never graduated from college and uh, this is the closest I've ever gotten to a college graduation. <laughs> truth be told, used to say that one is stating the truth about something that one might have a reason to hide. Example, I told the hiring person at the job interview, truth be told, I don't have a lot of practical experience in this but I'm a fast learner. The first story is about connecting the dots. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. Connect the dots. To draw a conclusion or understand something by relating different things that you know. Example, the movie was so hard to follow that I just couldn't completely understand it. I need a second watch to connect the dots from certain events in the movie. But Jobs' use of the phrase in this case is more about following your intuition and taking risks. 
Even if it doesn't make sense now, it will all make sense in the future when you look back and connect the dots. I dropped out of Reed College. I dropped out of Reed College. I dropped out of Reed College after the first six months, but then stayed around as a drop-in for another 18 months or so before I really quit. Drop out of college. Stayed around as a drop-in. To drop out is to quit school, university, or any formal course. To stay around is to delay leaving a place, that is, to be in a place for a little longer before going somewhere else. To drop in literally means to make an informal and brief visit. Jobs is making a play on words. He dropped out of college, the formal classes he was required to take, so he could drop in, in a more informal, experimental, and relaxed way, on the classes he thought he would enjoy. My biological mother was a young, unwed graduate student, and she decided to put me up for adoption. Unwed. A not so common word meaning not married. Related to this word is wedded, which means married. Example, she's an unwed mother. Graduate student, someone who's already earned a four year degree and is now pursuing a master's degree or PhD. An undergraduate is a student who has not yet received a degree. Example, graduate students are more likely to get a job at the company than undergraduates. Put me up for adoption. This phrase means to make a child available for adoption. So everything was all set for me to be adopted at birth by a lawyer and his wife. Be all set. To be set means to be ready. You can use all to emphasize this meaning. Example, the team is all set for tomorrow's big game. Except that when I popped out, they decided at the last minute that they really wanted a girl. Pop out, to emerge or appear surprisingly from the inside of something. Also used figuratively, for example, his eyes popped out when he saw his perfect test score. But I naively chose a college that was almost as expensive as Stanford and all of my working class parents' savings were being spent on my college tuition. Naive. If someone is naive, their lack of experience causes them to underestimate the situation, failing to see the danger of some things. With the suffix ly, this adjective becomes an adverb. Example, I naively believe that I could start studying for the test a day before. Tuition. The fee or amount of money a university charges a student to attend. Example, They've been saving money for their son's college tuition for years. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. I didn't have a dorm room. I didn't have a dorm room. I didn't have a dorm room. And much of what I stumbled into by following my curiosity and intuition turned out to be priceless later on. Stumble into. Stumble literally means to trip without falling, but figuratively to stumble into means to get yourself involved in something by accident. For example, the famous Jerry Garcia quote, truth is something you stumble into when you think you're going someplace else. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Trust your gut. Your guts are literally your intestines, and to trust your gut is a common expression meaning to believe and follow your instincts. Example. I'm so glad I trusted my gut and dropped out of school to pursue a career as an artist. Hey there, I have a quick question for you before we watch the rest of the lesson. Steve Jobs talks a lot in this video about finding your passion and doing the type of work that you love. So my question is, what is your passion and what kind of work would you really love to do if you could have the choice of doing anything? Take a moment to comment down below and answer that question. I look forward to reading and responding to them. All right, let's get back into the lesson. To follow your heart, even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. It leads you off the well-worn path. If something leads you somewhere, it makes you take a different direction. The word off, as in lead off, emphasizes the idea of abandoning a certain path and taking a new and even worse one. Example. He had a bright future as a basketball player, but his friends led him off his path to a life of drugs and nightlife. A well-worn path is a path that's walked on by a lot of people. For example, if you visit a new country and you go to places where other tourists don't usually go, you're going off the well-worn path. In this case, the well-worn path would be doing what everyone is expected to do, which is studying for a degree at a college. But Jobs says that if you don't love it, then follow your heart and do something you're truly passionate about, even if it means quitting school. Hit you in the head with a brick. Hit you in the head with a brick. 
Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Sometimes life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. Jobs here is using metaphoric language to convey the concept that life is sometimes difficult. If life hits you in the head with a brick, it means that an unfortunate event in your life happens. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. Settle. To begin to feel comfortable in a new place, job, position, etc. This verb is many times accompanied by the prepositions in or into. Example, he settled into his new position as a manager of the company. But what jobs means by if you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle, is that you should keep trying to find something that you love doing and not just make yourself content with a job or career that doesn't completely make you happy. All external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure. Pride, a feeling that makes a person believe they are worthwhile, important, and or that they possess something valuable, often in the eyes of others. To be proud of something is not bad, but Jobs is saying that pride can block us from realizing our potential because we're scared of looking bad in the eyes of others. Example, he needed help, but his pride wouldn't let him ask for it. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Dogma, a belief or set of beliefs that is accepted by people without logic or questioning. What Jobs means by don't be trapped by dogma is that you should question whatever set of beliefs you've been made to accept and be courageous in looking for other alternatives that allow you to do what you love. He then reinforces this idea by saying, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. This is encouragement to not be affected by what other people say, and instead, follow your own belief of what's best for you. Your inner voice is your own voice, which you hear in your head, or, more importantly, your heart or intuition. And then, when it had run its course, they put out a final issue. Issue. Besides meaning a problem or subject or topic of conversation, Another meaning of this word is the version of a newspaper or magazine that is published at a particular time. Example, he showed me a 1993 issue of the magazine. On the back cover of their final issue was a photograph of an early morning country road, the kind you might find yourself hitchhiking on if you were so adventurous. To hitchhike, to try to get a ride in a passing vehicle by holding out your hand with your thumb up. And now, as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Stay hungry, stay foolish. This is one of Steve Jobs' most memorable quotes. If you're hungry or have hunger, you have an uncontrollable desire to achieve something, like a dream or ambition. A foolish person is someone with silly or senseless behavior. But in this case, Jobs uses this word positively, implying that staying foolish is doing things that might seem foolish to others, but that they're the best things you could be doing to achieve your dream. In Jobs' case, it was doing and creating things that seemed foolish because nobody thought they were possible. In other words, stay hungry, stay foolish basically means don't be satisfied with anything less than your dreams and do whatever it takes to achieve them, even when looking bad in the process. Awesome job today. I hope you will go watch the full video just to test your comprehension after this lesson. And if you feel like you often get frustrated because you cannot understand native speakers without the subtitles, then I have a very special treat for you. I recommend that you sign up for our free three-part mini course where we will show you how you can have fun understanding native speakers and your favorite TV series. You can sign up for that by clicking the description down below. Remember, we make lessons like this for learners like you every single week. You can click right here to subscribe to get the newest ones. Click here to get that mini course that I just told you about. And you might want to learn with some of our best lessons. Just click here. Thanks so much for joining us. Now go out there and kick ass with your English.